Let's talk about sleep and benzodiazepines. If you know anything about this drug, you know that it works on GABA and it really helps people with anxiety and helps people with sleep. Do you know anybody who's taking a benzodiazepine? This is a medication that works on boosting GABA to help with reducing anxiety levels as well as improving sleep quality. Well, if you do, you will want to send them this video because benzodiazepines have been linked to cognitive decline, especially with prolonged use. A team of researchers from France and Canada actually linked benzodiazepine use to increased risk of being diagnosed with Alzheimer's disease. So it was cumulative risk. So the more that you had taken, the more years and the more doses you had taken of benzodiazepines, the higher the risk. This study was from about 2000 men and women over the age of 66 who had been diagnosed with Alzheimer's disease and they found this link. They randomly selected about 7,000 other individuals that did not have Alzheimer's disease and matched the age and the sex for those who had the disease. So once they had those pairings or those groups, the researchers looked at the drug prescriptions in the last five to six years prior to that diagnosis of Alzheimer's disease. They found that people who had taken a benzodiazepine for at least three months or less had about the same risk as somebody who had never taken the drug. But people who had taken a benzodiazepine drug for three to six months had 32% greater risk of developing Alzheimer's. And those taking the drug for more than six months had an 84% greater risk than those who had not taken this drug. So this is a huge number. 84% is really an increased risk for this development. And it doesn't matter if you are a young person taking this medication or you're 60 plus and you're taking this medication, the risk really is quite high. The type of drug also mattered here. So people who had been on that long acting benzodiazepine like Valium or Fluazepam, they had a greater risk than those who were on a short acting drug like Ativan or Xanax. We know that benzodiazepines boost that neurotransmitter called GABA and so many people that struggle with anxiety do struggle with it because they have such low GABA production. GABA is a calming neurotransmitter, meaning it calms the activity in the brain. And many people will continue to take something like this because it can help with sleep. So the reason I love this channel and having these conversations is because we can talk about other options to these medications that you can use that really are health enhancing, that don't have this risk profile that many of these medications do. So if you're currently taking a benzodiazepine or any medication for sleep, of course, do not stop taking the drugs on your own. Work with your practitioner if you want to just continue them and never go cold turkey. So work with your practitioner on a plan to taper off of these medications. None of this of course, is medical advice. And while I am a doctor, I am not your personal doctor. So all of this is just really for information purposes only. But let's talk about what are alternatives to boosting GABA in the natural medicine world. One of my favorite nutrients is called DHHB. And really, it's a compound that's been around for a very long time. Its active compound is called Hinocchial. We know that Hinocchial has these neuroprotective properties right? So they can be therapeutic in anxiety and pain, sleep issues, cognitive disorders such as Alzheimer's. So not only is this compound boosting GABA, but it's protecting the brain against cognitive decline. So DHHB or dihydrohinocchial B, it's a natural supplement and it has these anxiolytic effects, meaning it can prevent or help with reducing anxiety. It doesn't cause any significant changes in motor activity or muscle relaxation. It doesn't paralyze muscles or anything like that. So it's really low side effect profile, uh, but it has this, a similar effect of boosting GABA in the brain, which can help calm you down. So benzodiazepines are typically the medication that's used for many people prescribed in the United States, but they have these side effects like 
inability to drive because it can affect motor function, right? And it can really uh, interfere with somebody's life to be on these benzodiazepines. And then the aging of the brain that we talked about as well. So DHHB would be an alternative to something like a benzodiazepine. And this is a capsule. A lot of the peptides are injectables. There's many that are capsules. DHHB is not technically a peptide, but I think about it in terms of one of the natural options that really stimulates your body's own production of this uh, neurotransmitter or signaling molecule that helps with normalizing and natural function of the body. I will say I've used DHHB for sleep for myself. I found it very, very helpful to fall asleep. If you can't fall asleep, if your brain is you're feeling tired and wired and you can't fall asleep, DHHB can be really helpful there. I actually, here's a little story. I was so anxious and nervous on my wedding day in the morning and uh, I had some DHHB that I was going to take the night before the wedding because, you know, all of the nerves. And uh, I took, I was so nervous all morning long. Uh, my heart rate was really elevated. And uh, <laughs> I took a DHHB about an hour before the ceremony and I was cool as a cucumber for that. Now, I don't recommend typically taking this during the day unless somebody's dealing with severe anxiety and feeling just amped up. Uh, that's when in this situation it helped. But typically this is taken before bed. So DHHB has been shown to reduce that feeling of stress and anxiety. And it really did. It just zenned me out for that the rest of that wedding day, which is so perfect. And uh, I was really glad that I, I took that. It didn't sedate me, which was great. The key with this one is DHHB, you do not want to drink alcohol with it because alcohol also boosts GABA. And so it can uh, have a reaction there. I don't personally drink alcohol, so this isn't an issue. Uh, but for somebody who likes to enjoy a drink from time to time, you must know not to mix these. And again, DHHB, usually not recommended to take during the day because it can provoke sleep when you need to be alert for driving and activities of daily living. So I will link to this. This is available on the peptide store. DHHB is one of the best options that I recommend for women that are coming to me with anxiety or sleep issues, difficulty falling asleep. This one can really help. It is a capsule. It's quite inexpensive to try. So it's a good kind of first line strategy. And again, taking a night before bed. So I hope you found this helpful. I hope you understand more of the benzodiazepines and alternatives, natural alternatives to this that can help you with sleep, with anxiety. And I will share some other resources and anti-anxiety protocol that I use through Fullscript, as well as the DHHB link. If you're curious to learn more about peptides or other therapies such as DHHB, feel free to join the Peptide Rx Facebook group, it's multi-thousand strong, so many people around the world talking about peptides, their experience, asking for advice, or sharing unique situations. So it's a great place to post your question or get connected. There's a bunch of free PDFs about peptides there. And again, thanks for joining the channel. So happy to have you here. Dr. Amber here, and we'll see you again next week.